Good day, everyone. I'm Dr. John Ward. I'm the director of the Coalition for Global Hepatitis Elimination at the Task Force for Global Health here in the United States. It's my pleasure to welcome you to uh, uh, our webinar today, where we'll be um, exploring uh, a series of projects that um, uh, we helped um, countries develop to um, evaluate uh, their testing capacity, the burden of disease, to help them uh, strengthen their evidence base to guide development or revision of national testing strategies to reach goals for hepatitis um, elimination. Um, I'll be introducing you to those uh, study teams in just a moment. Um, but I wanted to give you a little bit of a, a background about why testing is so important. When you think about and you look at the history of disease elimination, certain critical um, uh, factors have to be in place. Number one, you have to have an agent that is that can be eliminated by the virtue of its biologic uh, features. Um, you have to have the uh, technical um, uh, feasibility um, to prevent transmission, in our case, through vaccination or prevention of bloodborne exposures to these bloodborne viruses of hepatitis B and hepatitis C, and have to have uh, treatments that can um, lessen the uh, risk of mortality from uh, the infectious agents as we do for hepatitis B and particularly for the curative therapies for hepatitis C. But the other critical feature that makes disease elimination possible is the availability of reliable, very highly sensitive and specific tests so that you can identify someone with an infection before they become clinically ill and at risk of mortality from that infection. So testing is a critical feature of disease elimination. And that's obviously very important for us when we speak of hepatitis elimination with the opportunity to avert over 7 million deaths by the end of this decade, if we can scale up testing to reach our elimination goals. Next slide. And as a result, uh, when you look at the key indicators that, been, that have been uh, put forward by WHO, uh, testing and linkage to care is, is a key feature of, um, of tracking uh, the um, capacity that has to be in place to make elimination possible. And as you see here, um, you know, globally, we are lagging behind in the percent of people who are aware of their status of hepatitis B or hepatitis C uh, and getting the care and treatment that they need. Uh, and this is true throughout the world, as, as shown here. So we, so we have a critical gap that we have to fill if we're going to be successful in eliminating hepatitis. And for that reason, um, we began to talk about you know, how could the coalition you know, help with that um, um, and begin to think about um, could we have some resources, if you look at the next slide, um, have some resources where you could you know, uh, uh, help countries uh, evaluate their testing capacity currently, either point of care testing or in laboratories, pull the data together to um, assess their uh, disease burden uh, and how it might vary by, by region or by certain key populations, and then put that information together of the testing capacity and where is your burden of disease and how well does that align? And then that strengthens your evidence base to see what uh, new policies or revision of policies need to be put in place to make testing more readily available or a, a better placement of technologies and, you know, and other strategies that could help you uh, improve your testing and, and linkage to care. Now, with the uh, support of Abbott Laboratories, uh, we were able to uh, develop a series of projects um, and you know, Abbott provided the funding, but they had no role in the selection of the countries or in how the uh, projects were conducted. Uh, the countries were, um, were identified through an open solicitation through our network, and then the projects were developed uh, with us, with these uh, local partners who you will be meeting uh, uh, in just uh, a few moments. Um, and we, we really, uh, as you'll be seeing, we want to bring the evidence together, but then in, in so doing, building the local coalitions of partners, laboratories, clinicians, uh, public health authorities that can help um, all of them act on that information 
uh, after the data collection was uh, completed. Next slide, please. So today I uh, have a really uh, exciting opportunity to uh, bring together uh, these projects from the HEAP project, the Hepatitis uh, Evaluation to Amplify Testing and Treatment, um, to really uh, have them report on the status of their findings and uh, how they are moving forward uh, with, that, uh, with that information. So you'll be hearing from uh, countries of Ghana, uh, Moldova, Vietnam, Uruguay, and Nigeria, and Malawi. And the three countries that first you'll be hearing from are ones that the projects are fairly well completed. And then the newest projects are the, are, are, will be the last three that you'll be uh, hearing from. So we'll turn it over to um, Dr. Ivan Nardi, who is also our Coalition for Global Hepatitis Elimination um, Hero Fellow, Global Hepatitis Elimination Fellow, uh, the first that we've been able to support. Uh, she's a physician scientist from Cape Coast uh, Teaching Hospital uh, in Ghana and was the um, principal investigator for the uh, HEAT team. And I think we have her on video uh, because of, of um, web access issues. So let's go to the video. But Abam will be available to us for questions and discussion. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Yvonne Ayakinati. I'm a physician at the Cape Coast Teaching Hospital in Ghana, and I'd like to share some of the experiences we had on the HEAT project in Ghana. So Ghana has a population of um, 30.8 million people, and previous studies have shown that the burden of hepatitis B is between 8.3 to 12.3%. And we have a prevalence from a previous systematic review in 2016 for hepatitis C of about 3%. Roughly, there are about 42,000 new hepatitis B infections and 9,200 new hepatitis C infections annually. Our objectives for the HEAT project were to conduct an up-to-date epidemiological assessment to understand the burden of disease, to conduct laboratory capacity assessment, to develop a budget-based plan to guide the scale-up of testing and to convene a coalition of local stakeholders to be able to put this plan into action. So we undertook a cross-sectional review of existing data on viral hepatitis testing from government hospitals, national databases, and selected civil society organizations in 12 out of the 16 administrative regions in the country. We reviewed testing data between January 2016 to December 2021. We looked at the testing numbers and the seroprevalence of patients that were tested in the hospital. And then we also evaluated the cost of testing and treatment. So here is a map of the various study sites where we were able to collect data from. And as you can see, it spanned the entire country from the Northern regions all the way down to Southern Ghana. And the study sites were comprised of various types of hospitals, including teaching hospitals, regional hospitals, um, and public health reference laboratories. So for our key findings, one of the key trends we noted was an unequal burden of disease burden in the northern regions in Ghana compared with the middle and southern parts of the country. So as you can see from this map, there was higher seroprevalence for hepatitis B amongst the in-hospital population um, in northern uh, regions in Ghana compared to the south. We also found similar findings for hepatitis C where the northern regions had the highest burden of hepatitis C antibody um, seroprevalence compared with the southern part of the country. One um, notable finding as well was the fact that over the last few years, there has been an increase in testing of pregnant women for hepatitis B surface antigen. And this is to do with the fact that it is now a requirement in the maternal health record books to have tested for hepatitis B. It is also required that hepatitis C is tested for, but this is done to a lesser extent. We found that the pooled prevalence of hepatitis B surface antigen seroprevalence in pregnant women 
was 6.14%. When we looked at testing capacity, we noted that there were a lot of rapid diagnostic test kits available for both hepatitis B surface antigen and hepatitis C antibody testing across the country. However, there was very limited access to ELISA testing. Um, and most of the profile tests for hepatitis B were done using RDT-based test kits. Very worrying was the fact that there is significantly less access to PCR testing for hepatitis B DNA and hepatitis C RNA. And the regions that had the highest burden, that is the northern parts of the country, had the worst access to PCR testing. And even in centers where PCR testing was available, we found that testing was being performed at um, reduced capacity. For hepatitis B, the DNA tests were being performed at 2% capacity, and for hepatitis C, RNA testing at 0.2% capacity. One of the major barriers to testing was the cost of um, being able to undertake a test. We noted that if a patient's uh, monthly wage in Ghana um, is around $150, treatment for hepatitis B, that is the annual cost of treatment, was around $260. And it was even worse for hepatitis C, where a 12-week course of pangenotypic DAAs were almost $900 which is far out of the reach of patients. The cost of workup was also quite expensive and limited access. So the key outcomes from this project was that we were able to get national level evidence for the first time for hepatitis B and C um, from the in-hospital population in Ghana from pregnant women. And then we also looked at blood donors as well. And this has been one of the first projects to do so and obviously without the coalition, we wouldn't have been able to undertake this project. We identified significant barriers to testing and treatment, and it demonstrated that there is a real need to review and update our current national policies and guidelines on viral hepatitis in Ghana. From this project, the Ghana Health Service and the WHO Country Office were also able to um, provide or develop some policy briefs on test kit quality, as well as the hepatitis related costs in Ghana. And we were able to generate some evidence to have an initial discussion with the National Health Insurance Authority of Ghana with regard to the pricing of testing and treatment for viral hepatitis. We use this data for our World Hepatitis Day 2022 campaign to create public awareness and also to engage communities. And then from this study, we were able to begin to discuss the development of a hepatitis C elimination project in Ghana, dubbed STOP HCV. So the rationale for STOP, which stands for Screening and Treatment Opportunity Project for Hepatitis C Virus in Ghana, is that we hope to um, have this act as a short-term plan to catalyze the action for viral hepatitis elimination in Ghana. And the project is specifically as a response to an expected donation of sulfosfobed that clatters there, um, which we will be obtaining to treat 50,000 Ghanaians <clears throat> who are infected with um, hepatitis C. And this project will facilitate us demonstrating a public health approach to HCV treatment in Ghana, because thus far, it's been very much, um, you know, large teaching hospitals where there are gastroenterologists residing who predominantly look after and manage hepatitis C patients. And obviously access to these teaching hospitals will be quite limited. This project will also <clears throat> facilitate um, strengthening our data reporting systems and build capacity in terms of health information. So the objectives are to identify and link 50,000 Ghanaian hepatitis C patients to care with donated DAA medicines from Egypt. We will strengthen data reporting and health information systems through the training of healthcare staff across the country, and then review national policies and plans for viral hepatitis elimination. The key project targets are 
to screen 50% of eligible individuals to ensure that 90% of those who are identified are linked to care and then to also ensure that 95% of patients we identify initiate treatment. So currently um, we are awaiting the drugs, um, for, we are awaiting the donation which will be received in Ghana hopefully in the coming months and then we'll be able to initiate our treatment um, and linkage to care project. So thank you very much for listening and I'm very happy to take any questions. Thank you, Yvonne, very much. Thank you for the project that was very well executed um, under your direction and for the project that's coming from that, uh, from HEAT uh, to stop HCV, focusing on Northern uh, Ghana. I was um, I had one question about that uh, project and then one other question, what the, uh, one question, you know, did the relationships that you created as you move through the heat project, you know, interacting with hospitals and laboratories, are those relationships helping you uh, set up the STOP hep the Hepatitis C project? Yes, very much so. So I'm in touch with all the sites where we visited during the heat project, um, and particularly in the northern region, there's real eagerness to be able to participate in STOP because the burden there is so high. So we have very good communications with, with the team from the HEAT project, yes. Thank you. And um, and what's your uh, testing algorithm you think that will be best for stop hepatitis C? So at the moment, we are trying to finalize the ideal testing algorithm. We have to be able to balance access to the various centers. We have already started um, patient enrollment by um, volunteer. Um, registration and we hope to go ahead and do screening across the country starting from the northern region. So we will start with an RDT based test and then progress to the PCR. We are in discussions to conduct further studies to see whether core antigen testing may be a possibility um, if we get appropriate sponsorship. Thank you very much. My last question is really about hepatitis B and the high rate of hepatitis B service engine positivity among pregnant women. Um, um, and you have with a high rate of testing of pregnant women uh, that you show, which is you know, you know, quite, you know, is a real accomplishment. But what is done with that information in terms of assuring the, the infant receives timely birth dose vaccination or is the mother referred for care and treatment? So um, the high testing rates currently are not being matched by linkage to care. One of the major barriers as well is um, that birth dose vaccination is not implemented in Ghana yet, though there is political will to do so. So um, even though there are high testing rates, there is limited um, newborn birth dose vaccination at the moment, and also linking mothers who require antiviral treatment because they still have to pay out of pocket if they meet treatment criteria. So that is a disconnect that also has to be addressed um, pretty soon. Great, and I think the, the, the data from the study helped to reveal that discrepancy. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, uh, thanks again, Avon. I think just to make sure we have time for everyone, let's move on and, and we can uh, come back to you in the discussion at the end of the uh, uh, webinar. It's yeah. my pleasure now to move on to talk about, uh, uh, to, uh, to have others talk about the project, a uh, heat project in Moldova, a country um, in Eastern Europe. Um, my pleasure to introduce Dr. Sylvia Stradelat, Head Department of the Epidemiological Surveillance of HIV and Viral Hepatitis from the National Agency for Public Health, <clears throat> pardon me, and Dr. Angela Parashiv, who's an associate professor at uh, the State University of Medicine and Pharmacology. And I'll turn it over to Sylvia and Angela. Thank you. Good afternoon for everyone. Uh, first, I would like to thank you for invitation to participate on this webinar and sharing our results within the project supported by the coalition from global hepatitis elimination provided in Republic of Moldova in 2021. Please next slide. 
Republic Moldova is a small country located in southeastern part of Europe with a population 2.6 million people, has a high prevalence of chronic hepatitis, liver cirrhosis, and primary liver cancer. In 2020, 73,000 people were recorded with chronic hepatitis and uh, other 10,000 with liver cirrhosis. About 64% of cases are caused by by chronic hepatitis of viral etiology uh, and uh, uh, 47,000 cases being officially recorded. Hepatitis B predominates in the etiological structure of the uh, chronic hepatitis constituting 70, uh, uh, 61 uh, Percent uh, compared with hepatitis C, which is uh, 31 percent. Please, next slide. In uh, the that project, uh, we uh, had uh, two main objectives. Uh, one of these uh, was to ensure performing of the situation analysis on filed of viral hepatitis BCD uh, and develop the action plan for eliminating viral hepatitis BCD. And the other one objects to ensure the estimation of people infected with viral hepatitis B and C in different group of risk and general population and provide modeling of epidemiological situation of infection of hepatitis B, C, depending on the implemented interventions. Please, next slide. Several activities and interventions were carried out. A group of expert specialists was organized and was directly involved in the realization of these projects. For collecting data, were developed the tools, the questionnaire for collection epidemiological prevention and treatment data for viral hepatitis BCD, and the other one questionnaire for laboratory evaluation on testing and diagnosis on viral hepatitis BCD. Next, please, uh, slide. Uh, data uh, for analysis were uh, collected from uh, 249 primary health care institutions and hospitals, and the, the data on testing and diagnosis were represented by 71 laboratories from country, including five uh, private laboratories. Of course, we uh, used and the uh, national uh, statistical forms that provided uh, uh, also data on viral hepatitis. Next, please. Based on uh, uh, collected data in the country was uh, provided the analysis. This analysis uh, uh, includes sex uh, captures and provides the information, uh, challenges, barriers on surveillance, acute and chronic hepatitis, epidemiological situation, uh, also provides information on prevention of viral hepatitis, hospital uh, care system and access to treatment, including NDAA uh, treatment in viral hepatitis, laboratory capacities in diagnosis of viral hepatitis, and a monitoring and evaluation situation on this uh, form. Next, please. Uh, within the uh, analysis, we identify many challenges uh, in Republic of Moldova, but uh, the main challenges are uh, determined uh, by uh, surveillance uh, intervention in Republic. Uh, there is a lack of integrated database that would allow us to analyze viral hepatitis morbidity and complexity, and in sufficient epidemiological data collected on cases of chronic viral hepatitis. The other uh, uh, problem is lack of national electronic register for tracking patients with viral hepatitis and liver cirrhosis of uh, uh, BCD etiology. Please, next slide. The other challenges are provided uh, by some uh, prophylactic uh, um, 
activities in Republic, we identify there are insufficient inf information and awarenesses uh, uh, above uh, general population and high group risk on viral hepatitis infection. Uh, is lack of financial resources for implementing implementation of these activities. And of course, we identify uh, a low coverage by vaccination against viral hepatitis B of person for, uh, from uh, group, uh, high group uh, at risk. Please, next uh, slide. One of the biggest challenges is testing and diagnosis in the Republic. We identified uh, uh, low uh, HBV and HCV testing of key population, and of course, uh, low testing and of general population. It uh, is determined by a poor implementation of laboratory screening and diagnostic service in country, of course, determined of low financial coverage for viral hepatitis screening testing. Uh, next, please. Based on uh, challenging data uh, provided the analysis, in Republic, we uh, uh, provided uh, a national strategic plan for elimination of viral hepatitis. This uh, plan was developed, uh, taken in, into account the barriers and challenges uh, in uh, the situation analysis, but of course, and the WHO recommendation for elimination of viral hepatitis and uh, other countries' experience. Uh, this uh, plan includes and provides specific objectives and strategic activities, including monitoring and evaluation indicators for six strategic areas. One of these is prevention of the new viral hepatitis infection. The other one is strengthening and consolidation viral hepatitis testing, treatment care monitoring of persons with viral hepatitis, reduction of health disparities caused by viral hepatitis, strengthening epidemiological surveillance of viral hepatitis, of, of course, integrated collaboration be, between the decision makers involved in the addressing of viral hepatitis and the yield question crisis. Uh, about uh, next our activities in our country, I will uh, ask my colleague Angela Paraskiv to talk about the yield. Angela, you are, please. Angela, I think you're on mute. Thank you very Thank much. You. Sorry. Uh, now, uh, is it okay? Yes, sounds yeah. good. So, uh, in order to determine the seroprevalence through HBV, we have collected data from 71 public and private laboratories of the country during 2020. It allowed the determination of HBS antigen seroprevalence in the country, which was 2.05. So based on this data, we have estimated that the real number of infected people with HPV is 43,573 compared to 29,069 officially recorded. So only about 66% of patients with chronic hepatitis B know that they have hepatitis B virus. Next, please. The same study model was applied for hepatitis C virus. So based on the collected data, uh, the anti uh, uh, HCV uh, level was 2.03. So we found that the real number of people with uh, hepatitis C virus is 55,834 cases compared to 14,928 cases officially reported in the Republic of Moldova. So only about 27% of patients with chronic hepatitis C know that they have hepatitis C virus. Next, please. 
So uh, we have included collected data from the epidemiological analysis of the situation of hepatitis C through the uh, hepatitis C disease burden simulation model in order to simulate the hepatitis C virus epidemic of Moldova and potential elimination scenarios through 2050. Next, please. So the simulation modeling was performed by using the total population of the country, which is 3.5 million officially, and the viremia prevalence of 2.44% for hepatitis C virus, as well as testing strategy that is used in our country at the moment by using rapid test for the screening and confirmation with PCR test. Next, please. So the simulation uh, presented 21 strategies available for the Republic of Moldova. So a 20% early screening rate and 80% annual treatment rate, a strategy that could be realistic to be achieved in our country. Next, please. So used uh, the selected elimination strategy, approximately 2.75 million individuals must be screened by 2030, peaking at about 600,000 individuals annually between 2023 and 25. So for each year after 2026, about uh, 45,000 individuals will need to be screened. Next, please. Screening, um, a screening uh, death individuals would result in over 62,000 newly diagnosed individuals within 2022-2026. And also when combining this new diagnosis and already diagnosed uh, individuals with hepatitis C virus, about 66 thousand individuals would require hepatitis C virus treatment between 2022 and 30. So the number of people in, that uh, initiate the treatment will peak at approximately 16,000 in 2023 and will decline to below 600 to 2028. The next please. Also, the hepatitis C virus incidence rate would decrease by 98% between 2015 and 2030. And hepatitis C virus associate, associated mortality also would fall by 72% as well during the same period of time, exceeding the target of 90% to 65% respectively. So we will avert 17,600 deaths by 2015. And the next, please. The total cumulative cost of the hepatitis C virus program under the selected elimination strategy is $104 million for the uh, Republic of Moldova. And this equates to between 10 million five and 15 million annually through 2025. And also in 2026, the annual pro program uh, cost would drop to just below $10 million before continuing to fall in future years. And after 2027, 20, uh, 20, this program cost accounts for less than 100,000 annually. The next, please. Uh, so the elimination, uh, the elimination scenario uh, is cost saving and um, $80 million will be saved between 2015 and 2050. So the elimination of hepatitis C virus in the Republic of Moldova is feasible. Next, please. So based on the results obtained through this project, we have established the main activities to be carried out in the next period. Uh, so we have to mention that it is very important pr to promote the implementation of strategic plan for the hepatitis elimination mm -hmm. in the Republic of Moldova, strengthening the viral hepatitis diagnosis capacity, ensuring testing and diagnosis of viral hepatitis, increasing the quality and accessibility of healthcare mm -hmm. service, 
strengthening the epidemiological surveillance of viral hepatitis, also raising public health awareness of viral hepatitis, increasing vaccination coverage of newborns, and also uh, high risk groups, including uh, people uh, using um, intravenous drug users, sexual workers, men who have sex with men, and patients, uh, persons in peniten peniten uh, penitentiary institutions. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you both for an excellent overview of an excellently uh, well executed study and uh, project. I um, had a couple of questions. I encourage others to put theirs in the chat or the q and I'm We're monitoring both. But uh, uh, first to you, Sylvia, uh, um, you mentioned uh, a working group uh, that you put together to start the project. Um, I, I would like to know um, who was in the working group. Um, you had such excellent participation of clinics and laboratories um, is, it was very interested to see what working group you put together to start the project. Thank you very much for that question. Uh, this working group was uh, organized and uh, participated specialists from National Agency of Public Health, University uh, or State University of uh, Medicine, of course, uh, specialists from uh, public uh, centers, uh, uh, territorial public centers, and uh, primary health uh, sector. Uh, this working group, uh, group was approved by uh, uh, or the bar, uh, Ministry of Health, and uh, they included uh, uh, the main specialists in the areas, of course, uh, of specialists in diagnosis that uh, provide uh, in the information and, uh, uh, and provide the analysis of data that was uh, collected uh, in, uh, within the, the project. Thank you. Um, a question also about um, access to testing that was found in the HEAT study. Um, in Ghana, uh, Aban showed how the testing um, uh, platforms were there, but they were not being used for hepatitis. Um, and I was wondering, in Moldova, is access... Uh, an issue for the testing equipment not being available in a in, in a in a clinic, or is it a, a question of the there's not a testing policy to uh, guide testing, or are there cost issues for patients, or what mm -hmm. other issues um, we need to think about when we want to expand access to testing? Thank you. Uh... Uh, uh, um, within the project, we identified that uh, in our country, uh, first of uh, we don't have the algorithms, provided algorithms uh, to be uh, implemented in the country. We need to develop this uh, uh, guidance and algorithm and uh, uh, provide the capacity building of laboratories. Uh, the other one problem is uh, in our country, uh, we implement the test rapid testing. Uh, uh, these tests are procured by the Ministry of Health. By uh, they are not, uh, there are large uh, um, testing of the of the person. We need to provide the company to to the testing compa company. Uh, uh, to inform the population that uh, these testing are in the Republic and uh, to address to for testing, uh, of course, uh, uh, population. Uh, the other one, uh, I, I think uh, the problem is about collecting data uh, because uh, in we don't have a database on provided testing in Republic. And this also, this is a problem. Uh, we 
we have collected the data only in the development of the project, but now we don't know how many people are tested uh, 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 in the years, and this will need to be developed. Uh, I think this is the, the first. Uh, of course, we have a gene experts platform that is uh, implemented in HIV testing and the TB testing. This platform need to be um, uh, with utilizati, uh, to be using uh, used for testing and the hepatitis B. But for implementing uh, this uh, um, technology, we need to develop uh, the policy strategies uh, to implementing the gene expert testing uh, on hepatitis. Thank you. Thank you. Um, in Angela, in the, in the modeling of a hepatitis C elimination program for Moldova, um, I was struck by the continued high cost of virologic testing, which is about, uh, I think you estimated at about $50 per test for the model. model. Uh, and just uh, maybe it's a question for you and Sylvia, what are the opportunities to uh, reduce that cost? Um. Uh, I think it is very important to, to reduce the cost because the rapid to test is uh, around one dollars, but it's very high prices for confirmation test, and this would need to be discussed within uh, at the level of Ministry of Health and provide uh, some uh, strategical. Uh, um, activities to, to reduce the test on the on the testing on viral hepatitis. Thank you. Well, hopefully we'll have opportunities to ask you more questions in the discussion period. There's a question in the Q&A that I would ask you to look at to type an answer to, please. But let's move on to Vietnam um, and um, hear about the HEAT project um, uh, there. Uh, it's my... Um, Pleasure to uh, introduce Dr. Amy Trang, Vice President of Administrative Services and Planning with the Vietnam Viral Hepatitis uh, Alliance. And um, she'll give you an overview of the HEAT project uh, in Vietnam. Amy? Greetings. My name is Amy Trang, and I'm with the Vietnam Viral Hepatitis Alliance. Today, I'll be talking about hepatitis evaluation to amplify testing and treatment, also known as HEAT, in Vietnam. This project was sponsored by the Coalition of Global Hepatitis Elimination at the Task Force for Global Health. The project management team includes Yim Dao, the program manager, Bob Fang, the project coordinator, myself, and our project advisor, Dr. Duan Dao, from Johns Hopkins University's Center of Excellence for Liver Diseases in Vietnam. Today we'll be discussing the overview of the project, as well as the data analysis and key findings. Let's start with the HEAT project overview. Let's start with some background information. Vietnam has some of the highest disease burdens of liver cancer in the world. More than 80% of liver cancer cases develop on the background of advanced fibrosis or cirrhosis using the Medivere scoring system. Up to 90% of advanced fibrosis cirrhosis cases, hence high risk for liver cancer, are due to hepatitis B virus and or hepatitis C virus. Up to 65% of newly diagnosed liver cancer cases in Vietnam are at an advanced symptomatic stage, for example, with BCLC, C, or D. Combating hepatitis is specifically mentioned in the Global Sustainable Development Goals and the WHO have T1. The goal of this project is to support elimination-ready hepatitis B and hepatitis C testing and policy development in Vietnam to specifically address the following objectives. One, identify feasible strategies to scale testing and proven models of care by the end of the project period. And two, develop national policy recommendations to inform further program development. Our key activities included one, conduct an epidemiological assessment to understand the burden of the disease, two, conduct assessment of laboratory testing capacity, three, convene a coalition of stakeholders to put the plan into action 
and implement testing. Four, model potential testing scale-up strategies to inform regional and national elimination planning. And five, develop a budget-based plan to guide the scale-up of testing linked to care. Our methodology for epidemiological assessment included retrospective cross-sectional collection and review of de-identified existing data from multiple sources. The data sources included regional and district hospitals, public health reference labs, private labs, private medical centers. There were some limitations, um, including the data collected from each site was not uniformed. And the data collection sites where we collaborated with included Medic Medical Networks, Hanoi Dongda, General Hospital, Hanoi, Institute of Gastroenterology and Hepatology. We would like to acknowledge and thank our key project collaborators. Without them, we would not have been able to complete this project. We had a bumpy road from start to end for this project because of the COVID-19 pandemic. We started this project in August 2020, but didn't complete the data collection until March 2021, and were not able to hold the stakeholder meetings or webinars until December of 2021. Our data analysis for publication is still ongoing. In this next section, we're gonna talk about the data analysis and key findings. This diagram is to provide you with a visual of the structure of health sectors in Vietnam. Starting with, this is a map of Vietnam to give you an idea of what the country looks like and where the data collection sites were located. Uh, there are three data collection sites, which we respectively named Hospital 1, 2, and 3. Hospital 1 is located in Ho Chi Minh City, which is the uh, most populated city in Vietnam. Um, Hospital 1 includes the largest private labs and medical centers in Vietnam, serving the whole southern region with their largest hospital facility located in Ho Chi Minh City. Hospital 2 is located in Hanoi, which is Vietnam's capital city. It is a general hospital. And it's one of the largest public medical facilities for viral hepatitis and infectious diseases in northern Vietnam, and it serves the whole region there. Hospital 3 is uh, of the most recognizable private teaching institutes in northern Vietnam in the field of viral hepatitis. This chart provides a summary of the types of data that were collected at the three hospital facilities and the different characteristics of these facilities, um, private medical center and a teaching institute. Here you can see the total number of individuals tested for hepatitis B surface antigen from 2018 to 2020 among the three data collection sites. So Hospital 1 has screened the most, um, with over 200,000 individuals screened and tested in 2018 and 2019. But in 2020, you do see a huge decline, um, and that can be attributed to the COVID-19 pandemic. This table shows the total number of individuals tested for anti-HCV, very similar to the data presented previously for hepatitis B. When we compare the prevalence of hepatitis B positive individuals in facilities from 2018 to 2020, we find that Hospital 2, the public facility, identified the most individuals infected with hepatitis B with a significant increase in 2020. Similarly, when we compare the prevalence of hepatitis C positive individuals among the facilities in 2018 to 2020, we also find that Hospital 2 had identified the most uh, individuals uh, infected by hepatitis C in their public facilities. When comparing the average prevalence of hepatitis B and hepatitis C infected patients among all three sites um, for 2018 to 2020, we find the, the average prevalence of hepatitis B comes out to be about 7% and 
and the average prevalence of hepatitis C comes out to 1.7%. Now let's get into some epidemiological assessment. When we look at gender, we find that it's inconclusive among the gender differences for hepatitis B and uh, hepatitis C seroprevalence from 2018 to 2020. We did find high hepatitis B surface antigen positive prevalence among those ages 40 to 49 and high anti-HCV positive prevalence among those ages 60 to 69. Now, what is the economic burden on viral hepatitis patients in Vietnam? So just to give you an idea, the average monthly income per capita in Vietnam for 2020 was 4,250,000 Vietnam dong, which is approximately 184 US dollars. The estimated cost of initial outpatient consultation, mm -hmm. diagnosis, and treatment of hepatitis B out of pocket with no insurance coverage is 16 million Vietnam dong or 695 US dollars per year. The estimated cost of initial outpatient consultation and treatment workup for hepatitis C out of pocket with no insurance coverage is 35 million Vietnam dong or 1,521 US dollars per year. The next couple of slides just gives you an idea of what the um, cost for the different diagnostics, tests, and treatment would be for hepatitis B patients if they were in private facilities. In the last part of our presentation, we're going to talk about the laboratory capacity assessment. There is a lot of data that we collected that I'm not going to go into details. I'm going to flash it on the screen and then give you a summary of our key findings. This is the serological testing capacity that we found in all three uh, data collection sites. The PCR testing capacity. And the CAG testing capacity and only one hospital provided this service. Here are our key summary of findings. All labs use serological PCR core antigen tests for hepatitis B surface antigen and anti hepatitis C tests. Most labs can serve 100% of testing machines based on their staff and services. All labs testing demands are below their testing capacity though. This concludes our presentation. Thank you for listening. And if there's any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat box. Thank you. Yes, please do so. Uh, we're gonna move on in the interest of um... Uh, Dr. Salon uh, Garona from uh, Uruguay. Uh, she has clinical responsibilities here in a few moments. So we're going to uh, go to, uh, uh, um, to the Uruguay uh, presentation uh, to make sure she can participate in person at this webinar. And then we'll uh, have comments and questions for both Uruguay and Vietnam to follow. So it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Salon Garona, head of the National Liver Transplant Program and Hepatology Service at the um, Central Hospital in Uruguay. Solange? And you're on mute at the moment, thank you. Hi. Hello, how are you? Thank you for the invitation and thank you for the support, John and Lindsay, incredible. Uh, we'd like first to share the video. I don't know if we can share it. It's a video that we created uh, for, the, for starting the HIT project in Uruguay. Es tiempo de despertar, de hacer hoy lo que ayer parecía inimaginable, dar un paso adelante. Es tiempo de saber. 
We will put a link to it in the chat so you can watch it with subtitles in English, but wanted to give you a little preview of what it looks like. Um, if you go on YouTube with the link provided in the chat, you'll be able to turn the English subtitles on so you can understand. Thank Please you, go ahead, Dr. Drona. So uh, the, the video was uh, planned to the start the kicking off of the HIT project and also to increase the awareness in the population. So uh, we are presenting the first national survey for the evaluation of hepatitis B and C to expand the test and treatment kit in Uruguay. And we are just starting. We are a team, a little team uh, of me, uh, Andres Balsamo, that is an epidemiologist. He already works in the uh, Ministry of Health. Uh, and Victoria Mainardi and Daniel Olivari are two staff hepatologists of the liver transplant program in our country. And we are like, like the basic team also with Camila that is working abroad. Uh, so we started this uh, initiative uh, with the help of HIT project and, and linking with, uh, and the situation in Uruguay was that previously to one year before, there was no program, no guidance of uh, hepatitis, public hepatitis B and C treatment from the Ministry of Health. So they asked us, this is the programmatic area that it runs the should run the the work on hepatitis B and C together with HIV and SIDA, and so the previous year to the starting the HIT project, they asked us to write the guide guidelines to the treatment of hepatitis B and C. Uh, we have here the next, please, in Uruguay a situation. Next, please. Uh, we we start first. We started with establishing the working group, the coalition, and we included in the Ministry of Health the area that uh, take care of this area. And then we have uh, an organ, a government uh, organism that is the one that financiates the treatment for hepatitis C, not hepatitis B. So we gathered them in the work, also as the. Uh, University, Public University of Medicine. And also we invited providers from private and public provider and laboratories in also the society, the civil society of patients. Here we wanted to uh, realize or share with you that our uh, challenge is with the civil society of patients because they have another plan or a plan that we still don't know which were the, was that plan. We started to a lot of conversation with them and still we don't feel that they are in, in, in fact, they are in the opposite way. They are in the social media speaking that this is the end of the possibility for Uruguay. The, the thing is that Uruguay have been solving the problem, not in an organized way, but really uh, had the, financiation for a universal coverage of the treatment for all the Uruguayan people. So our challenge is not in the area of financiation of the treatment, but is to discover and treat or diagnose, as, as John was saying, the testing is our challenge, to find the people and to test them to see if they are or not infected, and then guide them, link them to the treatment. Um, the next. So uh, we are now in the phase two of the of the of the project that is starting to send and compiling the existing data from different uh, areas, no epidemiologic and laboratory areas. And uh, the the good thing is that this heat was approved by the Ministry of Health and we are sending the question through the Ministry of Health. Because if not, we probably wouldn't have, won't, won't have the response or the interest to respond from the different um, institutions. So sending the question and doing this work from the, through the Ministry of Health for us guarantee the, the, that it will have serial data, no? Serious data. I don't know if I am being clear or you need some. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you are. Okay. Uh, the next. 
So what we achieved already now, no? uh, although we are just starting with the sending the, the questionnaires, we think that with this video and all the media, when we did the kickoff of the HIT project, we did in the Ministry of Health, all the television media, radio media, all were uh, aware of that. And were one day that all were speaking about it, but ITC and people were saying, oh, I, I didn't know that this was an, an issue. So I think that we are uh, learning or doing the increasing the awareness of the impact of the hepatitis in the national level. And that make that the uh, healthcare providers uh, take the information. And for example, we already uh, make them change some public policies as for example, every worker in Uruguay have to every two years have to do a control of health, like see if they have diabetes, if they have like uh, coronary disease, simple things, no? Uh, TBC, uh, syphilis, or so HIV. So we could include in, the, in this thing that is every two years for healthy people, working people, include the testing of HIV, ABC. Uh, also, uh, we had the issue that the people when was uh, a had a serological test positive for hepatitis C, this is not still for hepatitis B, but yes, for hepatitis C, they had to pay by themselves the PCR tests. And now we are, uh, they accepted to be included and pay by the institution, not from the people. And so that has secured that the, the, the we continues on with the process of getting the, the treatment. And also uh, we, when we write the guidance for, uh, for all the country or how to treat hepatitis C and B, we identify that the uh, government didn't cover the non-responders patients. And so we make changes and that's assessed the changes and then they take it. So now we have the coverage of the treatment for non-responders and hepatitis C. Next. So uh, where are we? Uh, we still are very in, the, in a baby state. We are starting and, and we are learning from all that have done a lot before from all of you. And uh, we feel that uh, this will be like the starting point for a program. We still don't have a program. Uh, the Ministry of Health is not like with the willing to, to do it. Know that they also are thinking about this is expensive or this is so and so. Uh, we think that the, the main innovation we should do is a, a bulk test in every primary attentional test, a, a point of care that we have tests rapid tests instead of serological tests. I think that that would be like growing the, the awareness and the identification of hepatitis C infected patients. About the hepatitis B, we didn't put it here. We are doing also the questionnaire. We are in a different position. Every baby has tested, every pregnant woman is tested. Every baby is vaccinated as soon as he starts his life. So that is, is well done, it's, it's not an issue for us. The issue for us is that we have only vaccination for babies and for uh, health workers, search workers, but not have for universal vaccination. And that is for what I, we are going to. Uh, so that is what I wanted to share. We have a lot of questions. We are starting and we need help, <laughs> but we are open to help. Thank you. No, thank you, Solange. You, uh, it, that's, um, you're off to a great start. And I think it, um, for you, uh, you're really a, a prime example of, of, um, of um, the value of champions for hepatitis elimination, how someone takes it on as a mission. And you certainly have done that uh, for Uruguay. And I think it's great to, to learn how the HEAT project has really stimulated you know, bringing the different stakeholders you know, to the table, the Ministry of Health clinicians, as you're representing, but also the civil society organizations, and 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 the differences that you point out. You know, I think you have a greater chance of res resolving those if everybody is at the table, and hopefully, as you begin to collect data, everybody begins to agree on 
where the problem is the greatest and and what should be uh, done about it. So um, do you remain optimistic that this can happen for Uruguay? Yes, I think so. Uh, we have like, uh, there's a change in the Ministry of Health also that uh, now the, the one that will become the Ministry of Health is, is the anesthesiologist of the liver transplant program. So, and she already did also a, a formation in, in England about uh, public health and her thesis issue was hepatitis C. So uh, I think that this is an opening and, and also that the social society of, pa of patients that are like against now is because they, are, they still don't understand. They are in a misunderstanding of what we are wanting to do. And they think that they are, we are bringing for money for us or something like that. And we have to understand that they are in suffering and I have been also working on to, to implement and to help the country to, to get a solution. So I am optimistic, obviously. Yeah, but, good, yeah. Uh, as am I. I mean, I think these differences, we've had experience in resolving them elsewhere, and I think they can definitely be um, resolved in a way that everybody's pulling together uh, in Uruguay. Uh, Dr. Angela showed how the modeling, how you can, the heat can lead to modeling to actually model a, a, a hepatitis elimination program for a country. Do you think that kind of modeling would be of value in Uruguay? Yes, I think that that will be, we were seeing that uh, presentation and we were speaking with Daniela here. And, and yes, I think that that will clarify the, the issues and the questions and the resistance and will help a lot, a lot when we be able to have the Harvard method and have the planification of how many people, it's like knowing how many people we have to test, how many people we have to, to do, it will organize the, the thing and will make the work easier. Uh, we have um, an expanded uh, capacity for PCR testing in the country because of COVID. This, we, are, have a, we are a little country of 3 million people while we know uh, very accessible. We don't have issues of accessibility. So having the PCR testing in around, all around the country, I think that that won't be an issue. So knowing how, how, how would be the pace and how calculate the pace with the money with the resources we have. I think that that will help a lot, a lot of, of like oh, setting, nice. setting the mindset we need to, to do the issues we have to solve. Excellent, thank you. Um, let me turn over to questions for um, um, Vietnam. I think there's a few in the uh, chat there, uh, uh, Amy. Um, um regarding um um you know i was struck by the large volume for me um uh, started off I mean, when you're looking at those three hospitals and there was such a large volume in hospital one versus hospital two and three um is that just because that hospital is larger or they had a more dynamic testing program that uh, resulted in a higher percentage of patients being tested for everything so that um uh hospital facility network is pretty large because it takes care of all of the southern regions. So you have many different provinces um, feeding into that hospital system. So the data that was collected was actually coming from three hospital sites in the south, but it's centralized at their data collection center. And in the south, it, 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 there tends to be um, more cases of hepatitis that has been uh, detected. Um, hospital two and three, because they're public facilities, there's limitations on who's attending and who's getting the um, services. So private versus public uh, issue is what we were highlighting there. Right, right. Um, um, there was a question about Delta testing uh, maybe, I don't know if this uh, Solange may have dropped off, but uh, um, did you look at anything, is there any uh, any information about Delta testing, hepatitis Delta testing in those hospitals as you look at hepatitis B? In Vietnam, um, Vietnam. Not, not yet. And we are looking into that because uh, uh, funding of course is, is uh, you know, key. And with the public um, hospital sites, uh, we are also tapping into the state-sponsored health insurance. 
Um, and you know, that's a little bit of, of a complex system as well. But those are items that we are um, uh, pushing for in terms of um, also encouraging people to get tested. That's great. Um, um, it could be also a question for, for really all three of the project areas um, because um, the testing capacity was a big focus for the COVID-19 response, strengthening testing capacity for viruses for COVID-19, but some of those platforms can certainly be applied to other viruses, including hepatitis B and hepatitis C. And you mentioned the pandemic uh, having an impact just on the study and collection of data. Do you have any knowledge, uh, now to ask uh, uh, Ghana and then ask Moldova, uh, was there any noticeable changes in testing capacity over the pandemic response in Vietnam? Yeah, so in Vietnam, you saw, um, you know, the influx of, of uh, uh, patients being tested for hepatitis B and C, especially in 2020. And, you know, that was a huge impact of whether or not they could actually go to the hospital sites um, because, uh, in Vietnam during the COVID pandemic, there was a certain time period where things were locked down. And the focus of course was on COVID and the hospitals would only take those cases as priority. So uh, there was direct effect um, on those patients uh, during that time period. Okay. And so, uh, Solange, was any uh, noticeable changes, positive or negative? for hepatitis testing during the uh, COVID response that you're aware of in your clinical practice? I didn't understand the question. What was the impact of the COVID-19 response on access to hepatitis testing in Uruguay? Yes, that, well, that we saw that, the, for example, it was a half the, the the testing in, in COVID epidemic. How did the test? How did the the test? How did the test? How uh, Sylvia, if you're uh, can um, uh, can hear me, um, what was the impact uh, on hepatitis testing uh, during the COVID nineteen response in Moldova, please? And you're on mute. Yep. Please take yourself off mute. Excuse me. Uh, I, in my opinion, uh, the COVID restrictions have uh, negative uh, um, actions for testing. Uh, but uh, at uh, last month, we uh, identified and high addressability for testing uh, with the rapid testing. And I uh, think uh, uh, in the next uh, semester of this year, uh, the results will be uh, higher compared with the, the result uh, from last year. Uh, of, of course, we are in the period that uh, to need to, to provide some uh, um, campaign to inform the population to, uh, of necessary ad addressability to the testing in the, our uh, healthcare uh, primary institution because uh, these uh, tests are available at, uh, at local level in the uh, um, primary health uh, uh, institution mm. and uh, they are available but the addressability is our uh, problem. Thank you. And Avon, uh, quickly any uh, thoughts about Ghana before we move to Nigeria? Yeah, in Ghana we noted that there was decreased testing um, mostly because of the lockdown so we had um, a period of lockdown where people couldn't um, go out. So that's reduced the number of testing. And we noted in our heat data as well that total number of tests did go down in, in during the COVID pandemic. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Um, uh, can uh, I uh, supply? Uh, we identified in our republic the vaccinations was lower compared with the pre-COVID um, period, and uh, this is a problem. I think also uh, compared to the testing, vaccination again hepatitis B, mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, in the high group population. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, let's move on to Nigeria. We can um, go back to the slide set. And uh, uh, we'll be hearing from Dr. Kalada Green, uh, the country coordinator, University of Manitoba, and the country director of the West African Center for Public Health and Development. Dr. Kalada. Yeah, thank you, John. And uh, let us also record uh, appreciation to the uh, coalition for hepatitis elimination and the tax force on uh, um, global uh, health. Um, in Nigeria, Nigeria has its own fair share of uh, hepatitis. However, I'll be talking to you on the data uh, collection app. And uh, Lindsay, am I is my screen being shared? Not yet. I think it's coming up right now. Looks great. Okay, you're seeing my screen. So we'll be talking about the data uh, collection app and um, we'll just take you through the features of the app we're using to collect the uh, data for the heat project which uh, we are just starting out here in nigeria we'll also tell you about the key patterns of the app and then uh, we'll end up with a short practical demonstration of some of those uh, patterns we are discussing um electronic data collection came up sometime early in the 1980s and since then there's been an increased efficiency in uh, data management you know and it has helped solve a lot of problems with the paper uh, data collection. Now we can capture data electronically, both online and offline, digitize it instantly, retrieve it, and then use it uh, readily. We are using the Survey CTO uh, app, which has a friendly interface that enables you to migrate, collect, and then export data for analysis. It has inbuilt logic models, such as skip patterns relevant and then constraint uh, commands. So for its patterns, you have this survey console, which is a central repository for both plank and field in surveys forms. You also have the survey CTO collect, which data collectors will fill out uh, to collect their data. And then you have the desktop, which helps to centralize work, export data, and then in very important in uh, managing projects. And finally, you have the Survey CTO Explorer, an inbuilt monitoring mechanism and visualization tool that allows you to quickly review your data. So for the HIT projects, we started by converting the paper form, the questionnaires into the digital uh, format on an Android uh, uh, tablet. And this, uh, the aim is to collect high quality data, secure, both online or offline using the mobile device, and then uh, do audits and uh, data collection real time while monitoring during uh, field activities. Following that, we then integrate into the survey CTO and then use other tools for some forms of analysis. These tools might be in Excel, Stata, or DHIS2. Uh, and with this, with also the survey CTO, we can then view and export data into statistical tools that could be used for further analysis. So the key patterns in the survey CTO, you have the relevant uh, pattern, which is an element of the instruments, which will give you an idea of what is relevant and what is not relevant uh, in respect of uh, your selected responses. You have the constraints, which, enables us to ensure that what you need to input, if it's alphabet or numeric, lower or uppercase, is what goes in there. And it won't entertain any values that is outside the constraints, else it will give an error message. 
Then there are skip patterns, which are conditional branchings or branch logic, which will help you skip to relevant sections as you uh, administer the instruments. And finally, the data explorer, which will summarize uploaded data and then uh, also help you have an idea of relationships between the data you're collecting and then some form of analysis. We're going to demonstrate all this uh, practically. So when you, when you start with the app on the Android, this is what you see at the beginning, the service that you collect. You have five elements there uh, to give you an idea on uh, the process of the collection interface between uh, the different uh, features on the, uh, on the data collection instruments. Then you go to the questionnaire ID, which is captured on the interface of the Android device. When the data collector clicks on this, you will then be able to collect data and then uh, either send it real time or collect it offline. And once you have a network, it loads up automatically. Also, there are the relevance and the constraints, which I have talked about, which are important for data quality checks and accuracy from the field. The relevance will tell you if only integers is allowed, while the constraints will help you ensure that your values, if you have daily values, weekly values, that your daily values are not uh, higher than your weekly values, and this helps to check the quality and accuracy of uh, data. Then you have the skip. The skip is one that helps demonstrate if you have if you say no to a question and there's a skip, it can automatically take you to the next skip following your no response. And if you say yes, it takes you through to the next question in a serial uh, pattern. I'm going to stop here and then my uh, colleague Jerry will demonstrate practically the service to you from the collect, the monitor, and then the ex exports. All right, thank you so much. Um, this is um, what he has just, doctor just presented to us just now. Um, this is the interface that we, we have here right now. You can see that um, the first thing that we have here in this place is the, uh, how the question is being designed at the data at the back end. This is the design that we're having in this place. You can see we are having informed consent that um, if they agree or not, part of the screenshot that we've just seen in that place and uh, the questionnaire design itself look like this. And then um, this is how these questions are designed at the back end. And then when we proceed, uh, I'd like to also show us a little bit about how um, the other. Yeah, yes. Okay. Sorry, please, I'm trying to navigate to the... Um, okay. All right, so um, so this is how, yes, this is this is how the, we, this is the first one, the question design that we have just shown us earlier. Then we, then we also have, we also have the service CTO uh, data collect. This is how the interface look like at the, at, uh, on the tablet. When we are with the tablet, the interface look this way. And uh, permit me to just take just one minute and show us how this data is being collected in real time. Now, this is the first message that the data collector will see, just to, just to remind them and let them know that the, uh, they are with the right respondent since we are dealing with the lab, so as to have the right person in front of them to give them the data they are asking for. And uh, we, we, like Dr. has rightly said, 
um, we have to get an, a consent from them as well in any data in any data collection that we do. And so, if they say no, after you've introduced yourself and then um, ask them for their consent and they say no, the question we um, we skip down to the last part. That means the best the, there will be no need for you to do anything in that place. We just get this report at the back end that there is a rejection. But if they select yes at this point, then we can proceed with the rest of the question that we have to ask. One of the skip pattern that we have, uh, one of the uh, pattern that we have in this place is about the integer and the test. For instance, if we were to be using a paper, one can come to this place, whether even though is saying entered um, number in the facility, they could decide to enter um, a test. And then let's just put, that, put in that test and see what will happen. It will not proceed because we, are, we require just an integer to be able to proceed from this particular one. This account that makes us uh, to track the quality of data that we're collecting from the field. By entering the integer, then we can proceed to another one. We also make sure that every day when people go to the field, uh, the date that they went to the field is being tracked so as to be able to know what particular person. In Nigeria, we are working in two states. Uh, these are the two states, depending on the state that the person is going into, they can select the state and proceed. When they select a local government in that state, they can, add, they can as well uh, proceed. After selecting this local government, they can, they can then say then. Then the next thing will be that the data collector are already, already programmed in OSU. They are already been programmed also in the database that to select their name. These are the 10 people currently in life that are in the field in Nasarawa state where we have selected. After selecting that one, they can also proceed. And then um, the local government that they have selected will be filtered out. The facility that are in that local government only will be filtered out. Say you didn't select any of this facility, you shouldn't also be able We proceed. When we proceed, after selecting, Yes, so we enter the address as it, the case may be, we proceed. And then is it private, public? Is it primary, secondary, tertiary? This is one of the skip pattern that we also construe that we also have in this place that we talked about. If somebody said he's not offering hepatitis, then there will be no need for you to ask, ask the person a following question that has to do with hepatitis, um, hepatitis text in that place. So if they say, if they say yes, we can proceed to the next question, which is number nine. But if they say no, you will realize that this is jumped down to 20, which is facility information and all that. So let me also take us to um, another session, which is a live monitoring session that we have in Survey CTO. Um, permission to refresh this particular page so you can see how live data is coming in from the field. It will just load, and then we have the live session. Right now, currently, as at this morning, we have less than this particular number that we are seeing in this place because people are right uh, in the field as we speak, collecting this data. And so we monitor these things uh, in life. This is also to tell us the, how many field we have, also the duration of the average duration of data collector that they use in the field to collect. If we have any issue, it's been programmed for us to be able to know to um, the checks to be able to flag up for us to be able to do it in this place. Here we monitor the data that is coming in on every day, on a daily basis. You can see on this graph, you can be able to tell that on, on a particular day, on the 27th of September, we got five data from the field. And these are the uh, way, different way that we monitor the relationship, the different pattern, the location where this data is being collected from, all these are being monitored. Finally, we have um, where we export the data, which is the, uh, the, third, the fourth part that doctors told us about. So this is how it, it, it looked like, the es export side. So um, with just a click, with just a click of, of this, you can, you can see that we have downloaded the, the data from the database. 
we just yeah. click. We have the data and then we share these data elements. To yeah, we're going to have yes. to wrap up because uh, uh, it's at the top of the hour. Do you want to make one last comment uh, before uh, we close, uh, Dr. Collada? Yeah, um, like I said, um, this is going on now. Um, we have two states, data is being collected, and then we hope that once we get this, we'll be able to bring up some descriptive analysis from what has happened in the field. Uh, again, we're grateful for this opportunity and we look forward to continue this work with the rest of the team and the coalition. Thanks. Yeah, it's our pleasure working with you and uh, great to see how your data collection instrument is set up and ready to be um, uh, already being put to use. So uh, thank you very much and look forward to uh, working with you as you uh, um, move forward in completing the uh, HEAT project in Nigeria. Um, now we're at the top of the hour. I want to thank all of our um, uh, investigators um, in the heat uh, countries uh, for their for their work, which as you can see has been very well done in providing the data regarding lab capacity, hepatitis burden, and what are some next steps of improving uh, testing for the key population so we can advance progress toward hepatitis elimination in these countries and then share these lessons learned more broadly. I think you also can see how heat is helping to bring the key stakeholders together so that they can agree on the information being collected and have a greater chance of working together to take action based on that evidence made possible by the HEAT project. Uh, we look forward to continuing to work with all of, all of, um, of, all of the HEAT programs um, and hope to develop uh, additional uh, HEAT uh, programs going forward. I wanna thank again uh, the support given to us by Abbott Laboratories. Uh, please continue to share your questions and comments uh, to us, and we will lay those on to the, um, to the study sites. Thank you again for your attention, and look forward to working with you all of you to uh, advance toward our shared goal of hepatitis elimination. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well done Thank to you. everyone. Thank you. Um, have a nice day. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. You have a nice day as well. Thank you.